everybody and it's great that you have joined us. Some of you maybe were with us the last time, if you weren't or maybe if you've forgotten, my name is Emma and I know that many of you are missing being at school these days. Many of you are missing being able to be with your friends and maybe especially you're missing school this week because I know that usually if you were in school this week that there would be lots of fun activities planned because this week schools and lots of people even throughout the world celebrate what we call World Book Day and usually you will have an opportunity to dress up as your favourite character from a book. Usually you'll maybe get a, a book token that you can put towards a book of your choice and lots of other fun things as well. Books are great. It's great to be able to have uh, different kinds of books that we can read. And I know that there's someone in my house who absolutely loves books. My husband is called Neil and maybe you will even get to meet him some week um, on the video. But you know, Neil loves books. And if I was to give you a tour of our house, you would find books in every single room. You would find shelves of books, you would find piles of books. And if you were to count how many books that there was, it would probably take quite a long time. See, Neil loves to read, and he especially loves to read mystery stories and detective stories, maybe like some of you. Or maybe you're like me and you prefer books that are full of interesting and exciting facts that you can then go and maybe share with others. Lots and lots of different kinds of books. I wonder what your favourite kind of book is or maybe what the name of your favourite book is. I'm going to let you have a little minute just to think of your favourite book or your favourite type of book. And after three, I want you to shout out either the type or the name of your most favourite book. You ready? One, two, three. Lots of different answers. And that's great. It's good to uh, read and it's good to be able to have the enjoyment of books, um, even that we can read to keep us entertained. Our house is full of books. But you know, there's one book that is different from all the other books in our house. One book that in it, there are actually lots and lots and lots of different stories. In fact, this book is a book that is made up of lots of different books. Some of these books are history books. Some of them are um, action stories. Some of them are books of poetry. In some of these books, we find family trees. This book is made up of lots of different books, but it's a very special book. It's different from all other books. Maybe you've already guessed what book I'm talking about. If you haven't, I'm going to give you a little clue. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. This book here, maybe you can't see because it doesn't say on the cover, but this book is a Bible. It's a book that is very special to us because we believe that this book is God's word. It's God's story to us. In this book, we can read what God wants us to know about him. It's very, very different from all other books because God is the one who wrote it. So we can trust that it is true. Maybe you're um, a little bit older and maybe you know that God used different men to write the Bible. He directed and guided them what they should write down. And you know the wonderful thing is, these men, didn't. many of them didn't know each other. These men, many of them lived in different countries. They spoke different languages. They lived in different times in history. But God spoke to them and told them what to write down. And what he told them was recorded down for us to read for ourselves. And whenever you read the Bible, although it's made up of lots of different stories and lots of different books, in the Bible, it's one 
big story right throughout. In the Bible, right throughout the story, it's a book of what God has done for us. At the start of the Bible, it starts pretty good. In fact, it tells us how wonderful God is. It tells us how powerful he is and how strong that he is. It tells us that God spoke and that there were mountains, that he spoke and there was sea and there was land. He spoke and there were animals. How powerful is God that he was able to do that? And how wonderful that the Bible says that he made you and me. And when he looked at the world, the Bible tells us that it was good it was very good it was perfect god was pleased with his creation and what he had made what a wonderful start to the bible but you know we don't have to read that far into the bible before we read that things changed people disobeyed god god had given adam and eve the first people he had given them everything that they needed more than they needed they lived in this beautiful garden they had all the things that they needed to eat and the most wonderful thing was they were able to enjoy a friendship with god but yet while god gave them one instruction to listen to they chose not to god had instructed them that there was one tree that they shouldn't eat from they had everything that they needed, but yet they wanted more. And sadly, the Bible says that they didn't listen to God's instruction, that they took the fruit of that tree and they ate it for themselves. And because they disobeyed God, that relationship between God and people was broken. How sad. The world was very different from how God had made it. People no longer enjoyed that friendship with God. But yet we read a little bit further in the Bible and we see a wonderful promise. God promised that he was going to send somebody to fix that broken relationship between God and people. You know, this is the big story of the Bible. And if I was to try and summarize it in one verse, I think I would choose the verse John chapter 3 verse 16. Maybe some of you know it. Maybe for some of you it's new, but I'm going to read it for you. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Maybe you're like me, because I don't have a very good memory, and sometimes I need a little bit of help. So we're going to put some actions to that verse to help us remember it, because it's a wonderful, wonderful verse. We're going to go like this for John chapter 3 verse 16 because that is where it is found in the Bible if you were to look it up um, for yourself. You would find it in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. Okay, so John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. Let's try that again. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the the world let's try the next little bit that he gave his only son and we're making a little cross because god's only son was jesus and the reason why he came to earth was to fix that broken relationship between god and people by taking our punishment on the cross let's try that from the start john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son <clears throat> that whoever and if you have people in your house you can point to them that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and some of you might know that that little action there means everlasting in sign language let's try from the start john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life do you know that relationship the bible tells us between god and people was broken but god sent jesus so that we could be forgiven not because of how good we are or what we do but because Jesus took our punishment for us and the Bible says that if we believe in him if we are sorry for the wrong that we have done 
and we are trusting we're believing that god can forgive us because of what jesus did for us that you can be forgiven that you can enjoy that friendship and that relationship with god let's try that verse once more john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life do you know the bible says that whenever jesus came to earth that he said something he said i am the way the truth and the life nobody comes to the father that's god except through me except through jesus jesus made that very clear that the only way that you can be forgiven is by coming through jesus by asking him to forgive you you know whenever we were doing that little verse we said for god so loved the world but you know that includes you so what i want you to do instead of making the world action i want you to point to yourself um, reminding yourself that God did this for you. He loved you and he wants to forgive you. John chapter three, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you know, boys and girls, it's a wonderful thing to know that Jesus is the way that we can have a relationship with God. But I wonder, do you know Christ? Do you know Jesus? Have you asked him to forgive you? See, it's a different thing to know about someone than to actually know a person. And you know what's most important is that you know God, that you know God because of what Jesus did. And we're gonna sing a little song just now you can listen along and then you can rewind back and sing it through if you want but it's asking the question do you know christ do you know him as your savior and do you know that you have been forgiven do you know the maker of the sun and rain the one who came from heaven to give life again he cares for and he knows you and he loves you so I'll tell you who it is in case you didn't know It's Jesus Christ The way, truth and life It's Jesus Christ The way, truth and life Do you know Christ? together do you know just as we finish i think it would be a good idea to talk to god and to pray to god sometimes um whenever i meet with um use in person i'll maybe do what we call a prayer drill just so that we're concentrating on what we are saying to god uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um spell out the word pray so we're going to go p r 
a y and you have to try to keep up with me okay you ready p i think you can do it quicker p r a y and what just to close our eyes just as we concentrate on thanking god just for the bible and for what he has done for us let's pray Father God, we just thank you um, for the Bible. We thank you that we have it in our language. We thank you that we can read it. And Father, we just thank you for the big story that we read in it of how much you loved us, Lord, that you made the way so that we could be forgiven, Lord, and that we can know you, Lord. Father, I pray for each person who is watching. And I pray, Lord, that they would come to know you as their saviour lord and that they would enjoy that friendship with you I pray these things in your name amen well thank you for tuning in again and once again as we said we're going to have some other little activities we're just getting up and running and um, but watch out for those in the coming weeks and hopefully see you in a couple of weeks see you later